So depending how good, yes, <laughs> yeah, just for you, Ruth. Depending how lively you're feeling. So I'm going to mute everyone. So lie down onto your backs. But do if you want to speak, do press your space bar. So yes, start on your back. So yeah, lie down onto your back. And I was gonna say lie with your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. Or if you're much, you know, if you prefer having your legs long, you could have your legs long, but yes, knees bent, feet standing on the floor. Have your feet a little distance apart. So you can feel, yeah, you want to feel very easy and comfortable. So if, if you imagine going to sleep in this position, you want to make yourself as comfy as possible. So that's it, I'm trying to see. Claudia, you could have your feet a bit wider apart, I think. Have a little, yeah, a little bit of distance between your feet. That's it, brilliant. Yeah, perfect. So what I'd like you to do is once you're settled on your back is perhaps first of all, have a couple of big sighing breaths. So you can exhale with a big sigh and just starting to let some of the busyness of the day ease away. And we're gonna start with some little movements on our back, little rotation movements. So the first thing I'd like you to do once you've had a couple of big sighing breaths is to feel the weight of your head on the floor and then start to let your head roll to the right and to the left. That's nice and keep it really easy. So you're just letting your head ease from side to side in a very sort of lazy, easy, comfortable way. And as you do so, just notice how the neck feels. You could notice how the two sides of the neck feel. So does it feel easier for the head to roll to one side or the other? And you can you know, also just feel how the neck feels generally, the back of the neck. And how do the shoulders rest on the floor? So maybe two or three more times, let your head roll to the right and to the left. And from rolling your head from side to side, find a comfortable place to settle the back of your head on the floor. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And bring your awareness down to your feet and your pelvis and your legs. And you're going to start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left. That's it. And you just go as far as is comfortable. So you don't have to go particularly far. It can be a little movement. What's nice is if you can find a sort of rhythmic rocking movement. Letting the knees tilt one way, letting the knees tilt the other. That's very nice. And again, sort of notice how this feels. Notice how it feels around your lower back, into the sides of your body. Good. And just do that a couple more times. And then you're going to settle your legs down. And if you're comfortable lying with your legs long, you could lengthen your legs out on the floor now. Or if it's more comfortable with your knees bent, keep your knees bent. So it's really up to you. And then you're going to take your arms up towards the ceiling and touch your hands together over your chest. So you want to have your hands over your chest, your elbows straight, that's it Claudia, good and your hand, elbow straight, hands stuck together. You've made a triangle with your arms. You're now gonna to start to rock this triangle to the right and to the left. So your weight is rocking, that's it, across your upper back. And you let your head move with your arms. Good, so what you don't want to do is let your hands slide. So keep your hands stuck together. I, I always sort of say as if they're super glued, but it's not a very nice image. The hands stuck together. Good, and you're rocking across your upper back, very nice. So we feel the weight shifts onto the back of one shoulder and then the back of the other, that's it. 
And when I was doing this earlier today, I was really noticing how, yeah, I was quite tight around my shoulders. But this movement is a way of giving ourselves a bit of a massage and really focusing in that effort in the upper back. Good, so just do it a couple more times and then you're going to let your arms rest and then we're gonna repeat it in a moment. It's a slightly different twist, but um, yeah, let your arms rest down for a moment because the arms can get tired. So let the arms rest down on the ground. It's just nice to let the arms be heavy for a moment. Feel a breath come in, feel a breath leave you. And then in your own time, you're going to bring your arms back into that same position. So taking your arms up towards the ceiling, touching your hands together in prayer, in prayer pose, the soles of the, the soles, the palms of the hands touching. And then coming back to that rocking movement, the head and the arms going in the same direction. And when you've done that a few times, you could then try, if you like, taking the head and the arms in opposite directions. You might have to do less, but you might feel more going on. So what's it like to let the head go one way and the arms go the other way? Now pay attention that you're not bending your elbows because you might, yeah, you might not be to go so far. And also make sure your neck is happy. Yeah, you're not sort of straining your neck in any way. So you could do that a couple more times, head and neck in opposite, no, arms and head in opposite directions. Head and neck in opposite directions would be a bit scary. And then come back to your arms and your head going in the same direction. That's it. And that will probably feel quite a lot easier when you come back to that. That's good. Well done. Okay, and then let the arms come to rest on the floor again. Oh, let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. Feel the length of your body on the ground from the back of your head down to your heels if your legs are long or down to your footprints if your knees are bent. Maybe one more cycle of breath, letting the breath come in, letting the breath leave you. And then when you're ready, Bend your knees, stand your feet on the floor. Feel the footprints on the ground, feel the back of your pelvis on the ground. Come back to letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. Lovely, oh, very nice and see how that feels now. Yeah, that looks really, really nice, good. Okay, so two or three more times, letting the knees tilt to the right and to the left. Good. And then pause in this middle for a moment. Keep, in, keep your legs as they are. And you're going to cross your arms over your chest. So look at me if you're not sure. So you've got one arm on, you're going to cross your arms like this. So you've got one arm, that's it, good. And now you're going to let your knees and your elbows and your head all rock to one side and then the other. That's it. So we're sort of rolling side to side across the back of our body. Okay, so do this a few more times. So it is quite a nice way to give yourself a bit of a massage rolling side to side across the back of your body. Um, Ruth, I'm not quite sure what's happened with your iPad. It's, it's rather strange. Um, images. Good. Okay, and then what I'd like you to do is you're going to rock. And I think maybe the best thing to do is rock all the way onto one side, but rock onto the side that you can see me from. Um, so obviously if you rock one way, you're not going to be able to see me at all. So I want you to rock onto what your side completely and we're going to lengthen ourselves out on our side. So you've rolled onto one side, you can just have a couple of sort of breaths there, however you like. And then you're going to lengthen yourself out on your side. So 
that's it. So I'm making, I'm trying to make myself as long and straight as possible. I've got, you've got a few options with the bottom arm. You could just have the bottom arm long and you could rest your head on it. You could bend the elbow and make a bit of a pillow for your head, or I quite like to prop my head up in my hand. I just feel a bit more alert like that. And then if you've got your top hand on the floor in front of you, you could just do a little bit of rocking on the side of your body. So this is a side balancing pose, and you all know this one, I'm, I'm an Antarctica, or most of you know it. So we come to try and settle on the side of our body, somewhere we can feel steady and stable. If you look down your feet, it's quite good to do this while your hand is on the floor. Look down your feet, at your feet. You should be able to see your toes and a little bit of your feet, but not the whole of your foot if you're in a long line. And then what we're going to do from here is see how it feels doing the top leg towards tree pose. And you might want to use your hand to bring, if you want to bring your heel further up your thigh. And it's interesting to see how can we balance? Yes, we might then need to bring our hand back onto the floor. How can we balance like this? And then from here, we're gonna gather this top knee in towards our armpit on the top side of our body. Now, if you feel very wobbly, you can always bend this bottom knee and slide it forwards a bit. But most of you look like you're pretty steady. And then from here, we lengthen out this top leg and you could catch your big toe or your trouser leg or your ankle um, somewhere. <laughs> Yes, very well done, good. And all the time we're trying to settle down through the side of our body to breathe, so that would be good. Yeah, breathe, settle, <sighs> try and soften, release tension. And there's that nice feeling of stretching into the heels so we can sort of feel our way all the way into our heels. That's sort of aliveness through our body. Good, and then we're gonna make our way back down through those same things. So folding your knee back to your armpit, bringing your foot back to tree pose. And then it's always interesting to see, can we come to lie on our side with our arm along the top side of our body? Can we feel steady? Oh, not so much me. And then from here, you're going to roll onto your belly for a couple of breaths before we do the other side. So roll onto your belly. I can't like to just bring my forehead or my cheek maybe, side of my head onto the back of my hands, one hand on top of the other. You can give your pelvis a bit of a wiggle. So particularly if you don't like lying on your belly too much, give your pelvis a little bit of a wiggle to see if you can settle there. Just maybe have one more cycle of breath, let your breath come in. Let your breath leave you. And then you're going to roll onto your other side. So uh, you probably don't need to see me this time, but if you want to turn around on your mat so you can see me, you can. Otherwise, just roll onto your other side. I'm gonna turn around so I can see you. Um, so we're doing exactly the same thing on the other side. So remember the bottom arm could be long, or it could be like, like a little pillow, or you could prop your head up in your hand. And you're trying to send your elbow in one direction and your heels in the other direction. You've got your hand on the floor in front of you. You could roll forwards and back a little bit. And so like me, you might well find that it's easier to balance on one side than the other. I'm just thinking this is my more difficult side. Um, <laughs> they're balanced very well on the other side, but this one feels more challenging. So from here, we can see what it's like to bring our top leg into tree pose. You can have a breath or two there. So it's, if you're feeling wobbly, it's good to think about really anchoring into the floor with the outer edge of your bottom foot. Yes, can we bring our hand off the floor? Can we fold our top knee in towards our armpit and can we settle there? So remember, this is the point at which if you're feeling very unsteady, you could bend your bottom knee slide it forwards on the floor. If you're feeling steady, you're then trying to lengthen out that top leg, catching your toe or your ankle or your trouser leg or your, yeah, somewhere on your leg. And then we can extend into both heels. Good. 
exhaling, stretching into the heels as we sort of settle down through the side of the body. So we're both, yeah, we're both sort of alert by stretching into the heels, but also relaxed because we're settling through the side of the body. And then again, we'll come down stage by stage, knee back towards your armpit, give you for a cycle of breath, back into tree pose on your side, back into having two long legs. Good, very nice. And then just see, just before we come out of this, can you bring your top arm along the top side of your body? Very nice. And then from here, you're going to roll onto your belly again. And settle down. Again, if you like to have one hand on top of the other, your cheek or your forehead resting on your hands, give your pelvis a little wiggle. Now, it is great with my new monitor. I can see you all so well. I'm very pleased. Um, on your belly, you can do one more different thing here, which I know some of you like, which is where you bend your knees and take the soles of your feet up towards the ceiling. And then you're tilting your feet from side to side. That's it. So just let the fat sit. So the feet are facing the ceiling. You let the feet rock from side to side. That's nice. Good. So we're doing that a few more times. And then from whenever you've had enough, you can let your feet come back on the floor. Let your legs rest down. And then from being on your belly, you're going to fold back into child pose for a couple of breaths. So fold your hips back over your heels, come into child pose. And just settle there, that's nice. Let your elbows rest on the floor. Let your breath come in, let your breath leave you. And then from child pose, we're going to do a couple of dog poses. So really very much in your own time and in your own way. You can come onto hands and knees. So obviously the first dog pose is always quite exploratory, isn't it? We don't really know how we feel in dog until we're actually there. So hands and knees, tucking your toes under, exhaling, rocking your hips back over your heels, picking your knees up off the floor. And then just giving yourself time to really feel. How does your dog pose feel this evening? And in this first dog pose, what could you do to help your dog pose feel more enjoyable? Usually bending the knees is a major thing. Bending the knees, planting the hands. And whenever you've had enough in that first dog, you can come back down, you can have maybe a breath or two in child, and you can do a second dog pose. So if we have this principle um, of, of, of what we're trying to do in yoga is things that are pleasant and pleasurable. Yeah, so, so when we come into our second dog pose, if we think, oh, it's not feeling, it's not feeling particularly pleasant or pleasurable, what could you do to help yourself enjoy it more? So big hands, so it could be taking your hands wider apart on the mat, yeah? So if your shoulders are feeling tight, you could have really wide hands, as wide as the mat. You could tuck your toes under, rock your hips back over your heels. When you come up into dog, you could keep your knees very bent. You could be sending your hips back towards the wall behind you, but bend the knees a lot. So we're, that's it, very nice. So we're just trying to get the work into the legs and out of the arms. That's nice, yes, good. Big hands on the floor, see if you can settle your hands. <sighs> can you exhale, let your head go? Good, very nice. And again, fold down into child pose. We have plenty of time to um, ease out in dog, yes. In child pose, or if you prefer to be in kneeling, that's, that's absolutely fine now. 
playlist, yeah, in your child pose, child pose or kneeling, whichever you prefer. Just have a couple of, couple of breaths. Feel your breath come in, feel your breath leave you. Feel your body settle on the ground. And so if you're in child pose, you can slide your hands a little bit further forwards on the floor so your elbows come up. And Mel, you can and then come onto hands and knees. And Mel, you can just come into a long hands and knees. So oh, yes, yeah, so I'd like to in this sort of long hands and knees where your hands are further forwards than your shoulders. And from here, you're going to do a little bit of rocking forwards and a little bit of rocking back. And especially at the moment, you're keeping the rocking forwards a little bit tentative. So have a, as you rock forwards, just check your hands, make sure your middle finger is pointing forwards. Okay, good. A little bit tentative, rocking back, rocking forwards. If this face up dog movement is very easy for you, then of course you can go a little bit further, but we're going to do some things and come back to this. So again, you can try forwards and then let's um, Let's just go all the way back for a moment. Sit back over your heels, give your hands a little shake out. We will come back to that, don't worry. So sit in kneeling for a moment, if that's okay. Shake your hands out. And then, yeah, give your hands a shake out and then, and then come back to hands and knees. Now this is a normal hands and knees, okay? So my hands are under my shoulders now and we're going to do some cat movements. So rounding the back to the ceiling, dipping the spine down to the floor. So some of our cat movements here, rounding, dipping, just looking for that feeling of movement around the middle of yourself. So this is about the movement of our spine, of our torso, that's it, rounding and dipping. Keeping it easy, keeping it comfortable. As you dip your spine down to the floor, you don't have to push it. As you round your back to the ceiling, let your head hang. Notice how your lower back feels. And then pause somewhere in the middle where you're neither rounding or dipping. And come to your tail wagging movements, yeah? So imagining you have a tail and wagging it. So it could be a dog's tail, um, <laughs> yeah, dog's tail, a fish's tail that you're swishing. And then you could try doing the same movement by, by swinging your lower legs from side to side. So if you're not going too quickly with this, you could look at your feet. Or you could swing your legs quite quickly and not look at, I mean, I just wouldn't want to look at my legs if I'm swinging them quickly. And just notice how, what's in, how this feels in the side of your body, one side gathering, the other side lengthening out. Great, let's, um, let's do that here. Yes, we're going to just, yeah, sit back and give your hands a little shake out. Now, we're gonna be doing, I think we've kind of done this sort of pose for ages, from, really from here, we're going to be stepping one foot forwards. So if I was to do this face on, I've got this sideways distance, yeah? So if you, if you like this, you're gonna be terribly wobbly. You want to have a bit of space between your knee, yeah, this sideways distance here. And if you need any more padding under your back knee, you have it. So, yeah, so come into this position with one foot stepped forwards. It doesn't matter which. I'll try not to get us confused. Good. So we're turning towards this top leg. That's it, so we're coming into a rotation, so good. Very nice, turning towards the top leg. Your, butt, your back arm can just be sort of heavy and relaxed, or you could have the hand resting on your pelvis. Your front hand can come to rest, that's it, on the thigh. Good. Now, you might wanna stay upright here, or you could see how it feels to try and maintain your twist, but to fold forwards a little bit. So your front hand slides down in front of your knee, but make sure that your top shoulder, your back shoulder is still staying up 
So you're still staying in the twist, yeah. Good. Okay. And then untwist and just let yourself fold forwards over your front thigh. That's it. Because then you're going to walk, tuck your toes under, you're going to walk your back knee back. So we come into a lunge. That's it. So walk the back leg away from you. So you want to end up with your front knee over your front heel. That's it. You're in a lunge, but let your back knee come onto the ground, Nicola, for the moment. <laughs> because from here, we can then revisit another twist, if you like. So if you're revisiting, um, if you want to do another twist, you want to plant the hand on the floor. So that you're, again, you're gonna to turn towards the front leg. So that hand would come sort of towards the back of your pelvis. And the other hand would come onto the floor, ideally flat on the floor. Yeah, so you're turning towards your front leg. And then if you wanted to, you would tuck your back toe under and let your back knee come off the ground. So you're really stretching into your back heel. And then that top arm can reach forwards in the opposite direction to your heel. Good. That's it. So that's it. Good. So you've got this long sort of stretch from your fingertips through to your back heel. Looks amazing. Well done, everyone. And then you let your back knee come down. You untwist. You bring your arm down. Untuck your toes and then ease back. So ease back like this. That's it. Good. And look back as well. <sighs> Well done, everyone. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to turn around so you can see me. So, oops. so back into sort of from this up kneeling place, step the other foot forwards. So we start in this position where we've got our knee under our heel in the front leg. So it's like, it's like a mini lunge, isn't it? We try and feel steady here. We've got our hip width distance. And then we turn towards this front leg. The back arm can hang or it can come onto the back of the pelvis. Good. And the front hand comes onto that front leg. Very nice. And then if you want to try folding forwards in this, you just try to maintain your twist. So as you fold forwards, you don't let this top shoulder come forwards. Good. Very nice. And then you could, yes, you can untwist. Come back up and then fold forwards over that then front leg. Bring your fingertips down to the ground, tuck your back toes under, walk your back leg away. That's it. So you come back in, you come back, or you come into a lunge on this side. So if you wanted to twist on this side, we're going to turn towards the front leg again. So that hand comes onto the back of your pelvis. And this other hand, if it can go flat on the floor, that's helpful. Or it could be fingertips or knuckles. And we turn towards that front leg. Very nice. And then if the toes are tucked under, you can let your back knee come off the ground. Really stretch into the back heel. Good. And then reach forwards with your top arm. So we've got this long stretch from back heel to fingertips. We're trying to breathe here. <sighs> Try to breathe and settle and release. Very nice. And then in your own time, yes, come down, bring the back knee down, untwist, bring your arm down, untuck your back toes, and then you're going to ease back. Ease back. And then I think after all of that, well, very well done. You deserve to come, I say, hope to so nice. Come into dog pose, come and have just a bit of a quiet leg. <laughs> Make dog pose seem quite easy after some of those. So come back. Hands on the floor, tucking your toes under, exhaling, rocking your hips back and your knees up into dog. <sighs> we bend the knees. Can we settle and breathe and release in dog? Yes. Oh, very nice dogs. Yes. So after, after we've done all those sort of twisty, lungy things, I think dog does start to feel more pleasurable. So if you're happy in dog, have another few breaths there. And then maybe just come down and have a couple of quiet breaths in child pose. Good. 
That's it. Settle your pelvis down. Settle your forehead on the ground. Let your elbows rest down, yes. Just bring your attention to the back of your shoulders. And just see, are your shoulders as soft and relaxed as they can be? We'll just notice how your shoulders feel. In a little while in standing, we're going to be focusing on some shoulder exercises. But just in child pose here, can we let the shoulders soften and ease? And then we're going to come back to some more face up dog. So let's start with our go, using our cat pose to go into face up dog. So come to a long hands and knees position again and tuck your toes under. So long hands and knees, toes tucked under. You're going to exhale, round your back to the ceiling and then rock your back, your hips back over your heels, keeping your back rounded. Let a breath come in, and then as you exhale, travel forwards with your back rounded to the ceiling, watching your pelvis come forwards. And then when your shoulders are right over your hands, then you can let your pelvis go, and you can untuck your toes good and look forwards, very nice. Try reversing that movement, so start going back, tuck your toes under, round your back to the ceiling, rock your hips back over your heels, you're looking back at your feet. Let a breath come in and then tra travel forwards as you exhale again. You're rounding your back, you're looking back at your pelvis, you're watching it come forwards. And then as your shoulders come over your hands, you let your pelvis go, you untuck your toes. Let's try that one more time. So we round our back. We round our back to go back and we round our back to come forward. So as we come forwards, we're not looking forwards and we're rounding our back to the ceiling. So it's just trying to really lengthen out our lower back. Very nice, good. Shoulders down away from the ears, fantastic, very nice. Fold back into child pose this time or kneeling just for a breath or two and then we'll do, we'll do our face up dog in a different, Way. If you want to give your hands a shake out, it's quite good to come and sit in kneeling for a moment. Yeah, why don't, why don't you come sit in kneeling, shake your hands out, put the backs of your hands together. Good. Very nice. Okay, so let's this time we'll use our, so again you want to be in a long hands and knees position and we'll use our tail wagging movements, so this nice one where we swing our pelvis side to side as we move forwards and back. So again, we're sort of being led by the pelvis. The pelvis swings and we let the pelvis move us forwards. Very nice, we let the pelvis move us back. And so, yeah, this one. We feel quite, yes, yeah, very nice. So just a little bit of a wiggle here. So sideways wiggle to take us forwards and back. And then sometimes we end up and we surprise ourselves and we end up in this face up dog that is easier than we might think. Okay. Just once or twice more. And then again, a couple of breaths in child pose or kneeling. Take the weight off the hands. Very nice. Just, yeah. Couple of breaths in child pose or kneeling. You want to give your hands a little shake out or bring the backs of your hands together, give your wrists a little bit of a wiggle. So in a moment, we're going to do one more dog pose. We're gonna, you can, if you want to do your one leg dog poses, you could do. And then we'll come into a forward bend and we'll come up into standing. We're gonna do a few shouldery things in standing. So, I'll talk you into one leg dog poses when we're, we're in dogs. So, you don't have to do them, but if you'd like to do them, you can. So, hands and knees, tucking your toes under, exhaling, rocking your hips back over your heels, picking your knees up off the floor. <sighs> Ending up in your dog 
pose. So you want to be able to settle in dog pose with two feet on the ground before you think about taking one leg up. So if you then do want to explore your one leg dogs, you can take a leg up, you can keep your pelvis level, or I like to roll my pelvis, reach up into a heel. You can bend your top leg and let it fall back behind you if you like. And remember with these one-legged dogs that they're not, they're not ones to stay in, yeah? They're ones to have a bit of a play around with, see how they feel, and then move on. So when you've had a play around with your one-legged dogs, obviously lifting each leg in turn, then moving on into a forward bend. So walking your hands into your feet, Ending up with all of your weight in your feet and your head hanging. At this point, check that your lower back's okay. If you need more support for your back, bend your knees, rest your elbows on your thighs. And in a moment, we're going to roll up into standing. If you need to walk your hands up your thighs, you can do for more support. Otherwise, if your back feels fine, let your arms hang, sink into your heels, roll up. Standing. So, so it's very nice to be able to see you all properly and <laughs> much more easily with my new monitor. So in standing, first of all, we're just going to do our loose, easy swinging twist. That's it. Let the arms swing, let your pelvis move. Good. And slap your arms onto the side of your body. So yes, what I was saying is I'll, I'll focus in standing. We're doing a little bit in standing tonight and our focus is on shoulders and releasing our shoulders. And you'll, you know, we've done quite a lot on the arms with the shoulders and we're going to do a little bit more. So a couple more times, swing your arms. That's it. And then let that go and try to block out that light. Settle down with your hands in prayer pose in front of your chest. Good. Just for a moment, close your eyes and feel your feet on the floor, feel the contact of your hands. And then open your eyes, let a breath come in as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. And then swing your arms, crossing them in front of your body. That's nice. And then what I'd like you to do from here is to give yourself a hug, a bit like we did on our backs, and have your right arm on top. So if you have your right arm on top, then um, you won't have to remember which one it was. And then from here, you're going to come on into your eagle arms. Just trying to block out that light. So this moves around, and if you know, if you know this one, grab it wrap it around if not Mel can um yes beautiful wonderful very nice and then we're going to take this into a forward bend so an eagle arms you're going to step your feet a bit wider apart and then as you exhale you're going to sink into your heels and fold forwards and use that sort of crisscrossed weight of your arms to help lengthen out your spine and whenever you want to, you can release your arm, you can uncross your arms and release your arms to the floor and just let them flop. <sighs> let a breath come in as you exhale, sink down into your heels, roll back up into standing. And bring your feet back to being a little bit closer together again, once you're back in standing. So feet sort of, again, a little distance apart, hands back in prayer pose in front of you. Good, so feet, feet slightly less wide apart now. Um, let breath come in as you exhale, arms down and then up. Let the breath come in and then swing your arms, cross them in front of you. And in a moment, we're going to give ourselves a hug with the left arm on top. And we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So give ourselves a hug with the left arm on top. 
and then come on into your eagle arms. That's it, very nice. And then from here, stepping your feet a little wider apart, light out as you exhale, folding forwards. <sighs> let your head go, let your arms go. Good. And whenever, yes, whenever you want to, you can uncross your arms, release them down towards the floor. Give them a little bit of a shake out. <sighs> and then sink into your heels, roll back up into standing. And then keep your feet this distance apart. And come into these, some of these side lengthening movements where, that's it, you're reaching one arm up and over. Well, up and over, the other arm stays heavy, and your pelvis goes, that's it, your pelvis goes in the direction of the raised arm, that, if you like that. So a couple more times from side to side. So we're trying to feel this length down through one side of the body, the body opening through one side, gathering up through the other. And then just have a little shake out. And we're going to do one more shouldery thing in standing. So you're going to bring your hands to touch again in prayer pose in front of your chest. You're going to let your breath come in. I might just kneel down so you can see me a bit more clearly. So from here, you're going to exhale, take your arms down and then up. Touch your hands in prayer pose over your head. And then this time you're going to bring your hands onto the base of your neck. Yeah. And then leave your left hand where it is and take your right arm out in a big circle all the way out to the side. Turn the palm back and then slide the back of your hand up your back. So we're coming to our lovely cow arms. And we're just going to keep moving with this. So then leave your left arm, leave the bottom arm where it is, take the top arm out, big circle, turn the palm back, slide the hands up your back and then just carry on alternating. So your arm comes up and then the other arm comes up. So just keep moving through this and try and keep it sort of easy as possible. It might be that your fingers touch behind your back. So when you have one arm up and one arm down in your cow arms, it might be your fingers touch, but it doesn't matter whether they do or not. Just keep, yeah, keep circling a few more times. Circle the arms down, that's it. Keep circling, keep moving those arms. Of course, if you've come to a place where you'd like to be and have a couple of breaths, you can stay there. But maybe it's just quite nice to keep moving. And then we will give our arms a shake out. It's hard to know when to stop with this one, isn't it? Keep, keep, <laughs> keep going forever. Give the arms and the legs a shake out now. So we're going to come back down now through a forward bend, dog pose and plank pose. And then we're going to come on to hands and knees and we're going to revisit plank and maybe side plank if you're, if you're feeling that way inclined. So from the back of your mats, let's, um, let's move like we would for prayer, um, sun salute. So have your hands in prayer pose at the back of your mat. The impact of your feet on the floor. Feel the contact of your hands. Let a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arm down and then up. Let a breath come in and exhale and roll forwards into a forward bend. Have a breath or two in your forward bend. And then you're walking your hands forwards, big hand prints on the floor. So you're walking forwards into dog pose. Have a couple of breaths in dog pose. And then you probably want to walk your hands a little bit further forwards from dog, unless it's very long. 
so that you can then rock your pelvis forwards and end up in your long line of plank. So you've got now you're ending up with your shoulders over your wrists and your pelvis. It's not hanging down to the ground like face up dog. Your pelvis is suspended in midair, not sticking up in the air like dog. <laughs> and we've got our abdominals kick in here. And that's when we know <laughs> that we're in the right place. <sighs> Do you come down if you think, oh, <sighs> that's a bit challenging. Come down, give your hands a shake out. Now, Sometimes it's easier to feel a bit more organized that we've got our hands in the right place for plank when we come up from the, from the floor. So we're gonna try going into plank from the floor. And then if you would feel like going on into side plank, you could join me. So come towards the front of your mat. So remember we've got the starting point of our shoulders over our wrists. And we, our pelvis is in the right place here on hands and knees. We just have to try and lengthen one leg back add the other leg in and not let our pelvis move up or down. And then we'll be in a nice plank pose. Have a couple of breaths there. And then if you want to try going on from now onto your side plank, you're rolling, aren't you, onto one side. You can either stack the feet or you can have one foot on the floor in front of the other. And then the top arm comes up. Lovely side plank. And then we have to obviously try the other side if we're up. That's possible, we can roll over onto the second side, side plank. Yes, if you feel like <laughs> side plank. Well done if you've done your side plank. <laughs> you can come down and give your hands a little bit of a shake out. Excellent. So Yes, a little bit of liveliness then. And, and then we will, <laughs> we will start to let me see, let's just um let's come here into cobbler pose. Okay, you can lean back on your hands. And then you can walk your hands in towards you a little bit. And from our cobbler pose, we'll move on into pinwheels. So let your top knee come on top of your other knee. Doesn't matter which, that's it. And then let your top leg slide back. That's it. So you're in your pinwheel position and we can do a bit of circling here. Very nice, good. circle one way we can circle the other way this just helps us to settle in pinwheel and then we'll do our pinwheel forward bend where we turn towards the knee that's going out to the side and we fold the weight of our body over this leg and then just let yourself settle and feel your breath come in feel your breath leave you let the weight of your body settle down through that thigh. Good. Lovely. And then what you're going to do from here, so you can walk your hands in. Good. Stay in pinwheel because we're from here we're going to move on into pigeon by sliding this knee that we just folded over back a little bit. So we slide that knee back and then we can lean over that leg a little bit and lengthen out our back, the other leg, which is going to be our back leg. So we come here, yes, and then you can, it depends, if you want to stay sort of a bit lopsided in pigeon to protect this knee if you need to, you can, or you can roll over like this, good. And we'll just um, have a few breaths in pigeon. And just remember in pigeon, you've got these options. You could be on your forearms. You could fold a bit lower down so your forehead comes towards the floor or the back of your hands. Or you could come a little bit higher up and be sort of on your hands in pigeon. So you, you've got all these options. And we'll just have a 
just another two or three cycles of breath. And if it gets too much at any point, come out by rolling onto that front leg here. So do yeah, be aware that you can sort of move a little bit. So from being lower down, you can come a bit higher up. Or from being higher up, you can go a little bit lower down. Okay, now, Emma, as you come out, what we, you, can, you can catch up with this. What, so what we're going to do from pigeon is when we roll out from pigeon, you're going to roll onto this front leg hip, and then you're going to swing your back leg forwards, yeah? Lengthen out the back leg forwards, and then stand. So this is what was your front leg. You're going to stand that foot on the floor. And then from here, I'm very pleased to hear, you're going to lie down onto your mat. We are going to sleep, we are, we are going to move here, but just let yourself settle. So you've got one knee bent and one leg long. Good. And in a moment, I hadn't sort of, I really hadn't um, practiced really the, the, this pose for quite a while when I did this earlier this week and then earlier today and that's how lovely it is. So what we're going to be doing here is starting that movement where you press down into the bent knee foot. So you press down into the bent knee foot and you let that side of the pelvis come away from the floor. That's it. So you press into the bent knee foot, you let that side of the pelvis come off the floor. Your pelvis tilts towards the long leg side, but it doesn't lift on the long leg side. And then you stop pressing and you let your pelvis come back down onto the floor on that bent knee side. And you repeat that movement several times. And it might be that you coordinate the pressing of your foot with exhaling. So down, that's it, down into, very nice, into the bent knee foot, letting that side of the pelvis lift, letting your pelvis tilt over to the long leg side. Enjoying this movement, which can um, be very pleasurable for the body. Just a couple more times, and then we're going to add in a little variation. So the next time your pelvis comes back onto the floor, just stay there for a moment. Cross your arms over your chest with the same arm on top as the bent leg. That's it. So now, as you press into your foot, you're also going to roll across your upper back. So the fingers, that's it, can trail sort of on the floor away from you. That's it. Good. And your head rolls as well. Very nice. So do this several times. We press into the foot. We roll across the upper back. We let our head roll. So we've got this feeling now that our weight is shifting. All of the weight is sort of shifting that's it, into the long leg side of the body. Very nice. And again, I, mean, I was doing this earlier today, I thought, oh, this is so nice. It just really is such a lovely way to sort of release tension from the ribs. Good. The shoulders. And then the next time you do this, I'd like you to roll all the way onto your side and just stay on your side for a couple of breaths. So you might bend your long leg now. You're just thinking, that's it. Can you roll all the way onto your side? You don't have to keep your arms crossed. You can gather your knees into your chest a little bit. And then when you've had a breath or two there, we will come back up because we have to do the other side. So you're going to come back up into cobbler pose. Now this time when we lie down, we won't be, get, we won't be getting up, we'll, we'll be staying down. So if you do want to have socks or warm things near you to put on, um, have them nearby and you won't have to get up. So we're back in cobbler pose. We're going the other way now with pinwheel. So if you can remember, that's it, go the other way. That's it, good. <laughs> <laughs> the other way, and that's it, a bit of circling, very nice, lovely, circling and settling, great, so circling and settling, we then turn, 
to face the knee that's going out to the side, we then fold our body over that leg. We settle down for a few breaths, lovely. The pinwheel's that place where we can really settle as we exhale, giving the weight of our body down through our leg, down to the ground. Maybe one more cycle of breath there. And then walking your hands in towards you, coming back upright. And then moving on into pigeon pose. So we're going to slide this knee that we were just folded over, we're going to slide that knee back a little bit. And we can lean our weight back over that leg lengthen out the back leg behind us that's it very nice good good and remember you can stay offside or you can let your pelvis come roll a bit so your pelvis is level with the ceiling and then again see what you would like to do with your arms would you like to go in your elbows and your forearms would you like to go lower and bring your forehead down towards the floor or the back of your hand ah each time you exhale, giving the weight of the pelvis to the floor. Maybe you'd like to come a little bit higher. Maybe you'd like to come onto your hands and see how that feels. So all of these things are possibilities. That's it. And just all the time we're just seeing how does this feel in our body. And particularly in pigeon, we want to feel, if, particularly if we're coming onto our hands, can we still let the shoulders soften? If you're happy in pigeon, have another two or three breaths here. When you're ready to come out, it's rolling onto your front leg hip and then swinging your back leg forward. So that long back leg becomes a long front leg and your other foot stands on the floor. And then we're going to lower ourselves down onto our backs and we'll do those same movements we did on the other side. But just let yourself settle first. <sighs> so settling on your back, that's it. Exactly when you're ready, you can come to your foot pressing movements. Make sure the foot that you're pressing into is in a place where it's easy to press into it. That, yes, I think that's a good move, Claudia, to move the foot a bit closer into you. Good. And when your pelvis is coming off the floor, just check that your knee is moving forwards away from you rather than over towards your long leg. Because part of this movement is about lengthening ourselves out through the front of our thigh. So we want to send the knee away over the footprint rather than let it wander towards the long leg. And again, remember, it can be really helpful and really settling to be exhaling as you're pressing into your foot. So to coordinate the pressing with an exhalation. And you can give yourself a hug. And remember, you have the same arm on top as the bent leg. So cross your arms over your chest and you've got that. Yes, that's it. The bent leg arm is on top. And then as you roll, so as you press into your foot and your pelvis lifts on the side, then you let yourself roll across your upper back and your fingertips could reach away from you on the floor. So you could slide your fingertips towards Otter, Claudia, as you roll that way. So those top, that's it. Exactly. You can reach towards Otter with those top fingertips. Good. Very nice. And so do this a few times, that's it. So we've just got this feeling now that we're really rolling the whole of ourselves sort of over towards the long leg side. There's a massage across our back. Good. So just once or twice more and then you're going to 
uncross your arms. Do the same thing with both legs. So this time you're going to stay on your back, Claudia, actually, because we're, yes, that's it. <laughs> Good. Anyone else who's got on their side? Yes, exactly. When, when you're on your back, just do, just do whatever you would like for a moment. So on your back, just what, yeah, what would you like to do for a moment? Yes, lots of nice things going on, happy baby things going on, rocking with the knees folded in. So yeah, so those are a couple of things you could do. Like a couple of you happy babies. Are, yes, you're fitting in very well, Claudia. Happy baby is a very popular Thursday evening thing to do. Folding the knees to the chest is nice, taking the legs up to the ceiling, shaking them out, or doing your happy baby rocking with your feet wide. And I'm just going to suggest a couple of very simple things we do before we settle down with a little bit of breathing. So when you've lots of nice taking the legs up to the ceiling, when you've um, finished there, bring your legs down. So you've got your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. And just come to letting your head roll to the right and to the left. So coming back to where we started. It's very easy, letting the head ease from side to side. Lovely. And then find a comfortable place to settle the head down and come to letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. That's it. Yes, I think, Claudia, you're about to move your feet a bit further away and that looked like a good option, I thought, actually. Yeah, yeah, moving your feet slightly further from you that's more comfy and the feet can be quite wide apart that's also nice just let the knees tilt to the right and to the left very easy very comfortable Lovely. and then we will settle ourselves down so we're going to settle down now i want us to do just a little a few cycles of buzzing breath lying down and we'll just settle quietly. So if you wanted to put on socks or a blanket right now or anything warmer, dim your lights, I don't know, whatever, whatever helps you feel um, settled and comfy. Good. So settle down onto your backs with your legs long or your knees bent, whatever you prefer. We're going to have three cycles of the buzzing breath. So your hands can rest on your belly or your arms can rest by your sides. And just let your eyelids close softly over your eyes. So we'll let a breath come in and then we'll make a buzzing sound on our out breath. We'll repeat that times. So let the breath come in. In twice more, so letting a breath come in. And one last time, receiving an inhalation.
Okay, we're just lying quietly for a few more cycles of breath. So I'm going to, in a moment, ring the singing bowl three times. And if, yeah, if you can do, just let yourself carry on resting until we get to the silence after the third sound. So thank you very much, everyone. Don't be, to be in a rush to, to move. I'm going to 